Paz de Cristo, hermanos de Sion, en esta mañana estamos gozando de la misericordia de Dios y estamos orando por toda la congregación. Dios está con nosotros. En primer lugar vamos a escuchar un hermoso canto, nuestra hermana Janelle Mafé.
Hermanos, paz de Cristo, es para mí una vez más un grande privilegio estar aquí para uh, declarar la victoria que tenemos en Cristo Jesús. Hermanos, nosotros extrañamos a cada uno de ustedes, amamos a cada uno de ustedes, estamos orando y, y confiando en el Señor y sabiendo que, hermanos, nuestra fortaleza y la paz que tenemos está en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Sabemos, hermanos, que nuestro socorro viene de Jehová. Amén. Hermanos, simplemente yo quiero uh, informarles so acerca del virus corona. Y yo pienso que es muy importante nomás darles in in información que yo pienso es crítica conocer en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Estamos, um, hermanos, siendo testigos en las noticias que la situación está empeorando. Eh, hemos leído, por ejemplo, en Nueva York, que cada hora hay una persona o más que está muriendo en Italia. Cienes de personas están muriendo cada día. Pero gracias a Dios, aquí en el condado de Orange, uh, solamente hay 78 casos um, y nadie ha muerto todavía. Eh, estamos confiando en el Señor. Uh, pero eh, esta infección, antes estábamos pensando en personas que... que llegaban de China o llegaban de Europa, pero ahora sabemos que esta infección ya está en la comunidad. O sea, no, no sabemos ninguna historia uh, de, una, de, de una persona que ha viajado, pero todavía esa persona puede tener una infección. Y es, es posible que una persona sin síntomas puede contagiar a otra persona, pero todavía uh, 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 puede uh, pasar y transmitir la infección. Entonces, podemos ver que esta infección es algo invisible. Entonces, hay ciertas cosas que nosotros tenemos que hacer, uh, ciertas cosas que el gobierno, ciertas agencias del condado, el estado, y nacionalmente, y realmente globalmente, mundialmente, que tenemos que hacer. Y la primera cosa es esto, hermanos. Es importante que en cualquier momento que tenemos que lavarnos las manos por un mínimo de 20 segundos con jabón. Um, antes um, de, de, uh, de hacer las cosas, antes, de, después de entrar a la casa, la cosa primera a hacer es lavar las manos, especialmente antes de, de comer. Um, en segundo lugar, nosotros tenemos que evi evitar tocar la cara, los ojos, el nariz, la boca, porque así se puede transmitir uh, la infección. Número tres, es muy importante practicar el distancia social. ¿Qué significa eso? Es mantener una distancia de seis pies uno a los otros, especialmente si estamos de compras, estamos afuera comprando comida, tiene que poner una distancia uh, de seis pies uno a los otros. Entonces, también es, es, es importante no, hermanos, tomar las manos y saludar así con las manos, con la gente, ni menos abrazar o besar. Um, es, es, es importante en esos momentos, cuando se presenta con una persona de distancia, nomás, nomás saludar así, um, con, con la mano así alta. Um, y y en, este, en, en esta manera vamos a poder um, um, reducir el riesgo ¿Por qué? Porque esta infección uh, se transmite, hermanos, con gotas respiratorias que pueden entrar a los pulmones. Entonces, si usted está cerca de alguien que, que está enferma y se toca la cara, entonces es más fácil um, tener o recibir esta, infeccio esta infección. En, en, el, en número cuatro, hermanos, es importante cubrarse uh, la, uh, cuando se estornude con un panuelo Um, de papel y inmediatamente después lavarse las manos. Uh, punto número 5. Si usted está enfermo, con calentura, con fiebre um, y con tos o falta de respiración, es sumamente importante que usted um, también se, se queda um, en la casa por, por, menos de, uh, por lo menos siete días um, desde el primer día de sus síntomas. También es importante esperar tres días después de que termina um, la calentura o empieza a mejorar la tos. 
uh, antes de asociarse con los demás. Y algunos expertos están diciendo esperar 10 o 14 días. Um, vamos a cambiar el tema un poco. ¿Cuáles son los pacientes más en riesgo? Son los pacientes que están arriba de 65 años o tienen problemas médicos como historia de cáncer, asma, otros problemas pulmonares, cardíacas, también los que tienen diabetes. Um, entonces, una pregunta que todo el día las, los pacientes me están um, llamando y me están preguntando, uh, ¿cuándo debo ir, ir al hospital? ¿Cuándo debo ir a la clínica? Si una persona tiene calentura, y empieza a sentir una falta de respiración. Esto es el momento de llamar a su médico, um, porque nosotros, hermanos, tenemos que decidir si es necesario hospitalizar el paciente o no. Si una persona tiene calentura y tiene dolor de garganta, por ejemplo, o, o la tos, y más o menos se siente bien, es, es importante permanecer en su hogar, en su cuarto propio, con su, con su baño propio y usar esa y la familia tiene que estar a um, una distancia de usted, debe de comer en su lugar y si tiene que pasar el pasillo, es sumamente impor, importante us, usar una máscara. Si tienen preguntas, cualquier persona que vive en el condado de Orange puede llamar directamente a la agencia del condado de Orange y le voy, les voy a dar el número es 1-800-564-8448. Una vez más, 1-800-564-8448. En esta línea de teléfono hay alguien que, uh, que uh, habla español y les puede dar información de dónde usted puede llamar. Si usted no tiene aseguranza médica, Todavía hay ayuda, hermanos, en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Finalmente, hermanos, las personas están enfermando y no tienen infección. Están llenos de pánico, están llenos de ansiedad, están llenos de temor. Porque cuando una persona se llena de temor y pánico, ¿qué pasa con el cuerpo? Las defensas inmunológicas empiezan a estar más débiles y solamente eso es más riesgo. Una persona entrar en una infección, otra enfermedad. Pero yo eh, alabo a mi rey, hermanos, alabo a nuestro Dios, porque nosotros tenemos la esperanza en Cristo Jesús. Él es nuestra paz. Por eso la palabra de Dios dice, por nada estéis afanosos si no sean conocidas vuestras peticiones delante de Dios en toda oración y ruego con acción de gracias. Hoy es el tiempo más que nunca estar levantando las manos. No podemos estar juntos físicamente, pero sí espiritualmente, confiando en el mismo Dios. Y dice la palabra de Dios, y la paz de Dios que sobrepasa todo entendimiento, guardará vuestros corazones y vuestros pensamientos en Cristo Jesús. Hermanos, adelante, en el nombre de Cristo Jesús, aquí estamos para servirles y estamos en oración. Hermano, paz de Cristo. En primer lugar, quiero decirles que Dios está con nosotros. El Señor nos ha dicho, nos ha, nos ha dicho no te dejaré, no te desempararé, estaré con vosotros hasta el fin del mundo. En esta mañana quiero traerles a la iglesia un pensamiento eh, de confianza, de fe, un pensamiento en el cual ustedes deben de tomarlo en su corazón y saber que Dios es con nosotros. Y les voy a hablar acerca del poder de la oración. Dice en Nahum 1.7, Jehová es bueno, fortaleza en el día de la angustia y conoce a los que en él confían. Miramos en la palabra de Dios que durante el reinado de Josafat vino una gran multitud de gente enemiga que venían de la tierra de Moab y Amón. Y le mandaron decir al rey, contra ti viene una gran multitud del otro lado del mar y de Siria. Entonces miramos que este hombre tuvo temor 
Porque esta gente que venía, hermanos, era gente malvada, gente sanguinaria, sin misericordia, que descuartizaban sin ninguna misericordia a las personas como los ancianos, los niños, las mujeres. Pero miramos que Josafat hace algo muy hermoso. Dice la Biblia que él se humilla, humilla su rostro para consultar a Jehová y hace progonar, progonar, progonar ayuno y oración a toda Judá. Miramos que el pueblo al mirar la acción del rey, el pueblo se une como una sola persona. Entonces el rey Josafat se pone de pie en la asamblea en la casa de Dios y empieza a orar en voz alta y dice Jehová Dios de nuestros padres no eres tú Dios en los cielos y tienes dominio sobre todos los reinos de las naciones no está en tu mano tal fuerza y poder que no hay quien te resista Dios nuestro no echaste Tú, los moradores de esta tierra delante de tu pueblo Israel, y la diste a la descendencia de Abraham, tu amigo, para siempre, y ellos han habitado en ella y te han edificado en ella santuario a tu nombre, diciendo, si mal viniere sobre nosotros, o espada de castigo, o pestilencia, o hambre, nos presentaremos delante de esta casa a causa de nuestros Nuestras tribulaciones y clararemos a ti y tú nos oirás y tú nos salvarás. Ahora pues, he aquí estos nuestros enemigos, oh Dios nuestro, no los juzgarás tú, porque en nosotros no hay fuerza contra tan grande multitud que viene contra nosotros. No sabemos qué hacer y a ti volvemos nuestros ojos. Pero algo pasó, algo interesante, que el Espíritu de Dios vino sobre uno de los ministros que le dijo al pueblo, no temáis, ni os amedentréis delante de esta multitud tan grande, porque no es vuestra guerra, sino de Dios. No habrá para que peleéis vosotros en este caso, paraos. Y me gusta la forma que dice el ministro a través del Espíritu Santo, estad quietos. Y ve la salvación de Jehová con vosotros. Es exactamente lo que Dios nos está diciendo en esta mañana. Iglesia de Sion, estad quietos y ve la salvación de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Y miramos en la historia de, este, de esta situación que al día siguiente el pueblo se une, se organiza. Y los ministros y cantantes alaban a Dios con con fuerza y alta voz, mientras los soldados salen a la guerra. El rey Josafat le dice, oídme creer en Jehová vuestro Dios y estaréis seguro, creer a sus profetas y seréis prosperados. Dice la Biblia que cuando el pueblo empezó a entonar cantos de alabanza, Dios puso a los amonitas en contra de los mavitas y se mataron los unos a los otros. Cuando llegaron los israelitas, miraron miles y miles de muertos y ninguno de los enemigos se había escapado. El pueblo regresó a Jerusalén con salterios, con arpas y trompetas, alabando a Dios. Ahora, pensando en nuestra situación, ¿qué vamos a hacer cuando llega la calamidad a nuestra vida? ¿Cuál debe de ser nuestra reacción? ¿Hacia dónde vamos a ir? ¿Hacia dónde vamos a pedir ayuda, auxilio? ¿A quién vamos a pedirle socorro? Tenemos que darnos cuenta, hermanos, que van a llegar cosas a nuestra vida que absolutamente nadie nos va a poder ayudar. Como en esta situación del coronavirus, nadie nos puede ayudar. El único que tiene el poder para ayudarnos es nuestro Señor Jesucristo. A Él sea la honra y la gloria. Especialmente, hermanos, cuando llega la enfermedad o cuando llegan situaciones precarias y que afectan a nuestros seres queridos, a veces no sabemos qué hacer. Son tiempos difíciles, 
Pero la Biblia nos dice que el único que tiene el poder para ayudarnos es nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el Todopoderoso, el Creador del Universo, el Rey de Reyes, el Señor de Señores. Aleluya, porque para Él no hay nada imposible. Y por eso Nahum 1.7 dice, Jehová es bueno, fortalece en el día de la angustia y conoce a los que en Él confía. Miramos en la palabra de Dios que, que se utilizan adjetivos para describir lo que Dios es para nosotros. Y nos dice su palabra, Dios es nuestra defensa. Dios es nuestra fortaleza, nuestro escondedero, nuestro refugio, nuestro escudo, nuestro amparo. Aleluya, nuestro pronto auxilio. Y David lo describe más perfectamente en el Salmo 62, cuando dice, alma mía, en Dios solamente reposa, porque de él es mi esperanza. Él solamente es mi roca y mi salvación. Es mi refugio, no resbalaré. En Dios está mi roca fuerte y mi refugio. Esperad en él todo tiempo, oh pueblos. Derramad delante de él vuestro corazón, Dios nuestro refugio. En esta ocasión vamos, hermanos, o en esta situación vamos a unirnos en ayuno y oración para imitar la presencia y el poder de Dios. Estoy recomendando que cada familia de la iglesia de Sion todos los días oren media hora. Y vamos a orar, hermanos, para que esta epidemia pase. Vamos a orar por nuestras familias. Vamos a orar, hermanos, por la iglesia de Sion. Vamos a orar por todo este país. Y vamos a orar por el mundo entero que está sufriendo. Porque en 1 Pedro 3.12 dice, porque los ojos del Señor están sobre los justos y sus oídos atentos a sus oraciones. A esta hora le voy a pedir, donde quiera que usted se encuentre, que cierre sus ojos y vamos a hacer una oración. Señor Padre Celestial, te damos toda la honra, toda la gloria y toda la suprema alabanza. Señor, te presento a esta hermosa congregación, a la iglesia de Sion, que tú seas el que bendiga, Señor, a cada familia, nuestros niños, nuestros juniors, nuestros jóvenes, los varones, las dorcas, cada familia, cada pareja, las madres solteras, a las viudas, a los que están enfermos, Señor, sánalos. Y yo te pido, Señor, que envías, que envíes, Señor, tu mano de protección sobre nosotros, porque sabemos que somos tu pueblo, somos tu iglesia, somos tus hijos, somos las ovejas de tu prado. Y yo sé que tú vas a ser glorificado en esto, en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. Amén. Good morning, everyone. It's, it's wonderful to be here. And I just want to start off by giving God all the honor and glory because we find ourselves in his grace and his mercy once again. And I wanted to thank uh, our pastors for doing such an amazing job getting uh, prepared in a way that we haven't had to do before, but they did it with all their heart and with a sense of urgency and a sense of, of love. And I want to thank God for my wife who has uh, been juggling a lot of things lately with the schools closed and, and having to dedicate more time when I get out, out of work because we've been busy uh, putting all these things together. Excuse me for touching my face. I know I just broke a, a, a rule. I'm not supposed to do that. But um, I also want to thank God for the amazing talent that God has surrounded us with here at, at, at our church. We have talented people behind the scenes working and giving, giving God uh, all the glory through their, through their skills. Um, Sister Natalie Maffei, Sister Patty Maffei, and Brother Caleb Maffei, who are willing and have been showing their willingness to, to help us uh, streaming these services. And it's just amazing that God has blessed us with a doctor in, in house who not only knows what he's doing with, uh, with patients, but also in, in declaring the word of God to all those who are open. So we're so thankful to be here today. And I'm just going to get right into the word that God has placed in my heart. And there where you are, I'm going to invite you to open your Bibles up to Psalms chapter 52, verse 9. 
And I'm not going to wait for you to say amen today, but I'll give you just a few seconds to find it. Psalms 52, 9. I think the, the biggest difference in, in streaming this is that we aren't able to engage with you guys the same way. So although I miss it, I'm thankful that God has given us a way to, to connect in, in this fashion. But Psalms 52, 9, and it says, I will praise you forever because you have done it. How beautiful that is that? Because you have done it. We've seen what God has done before. We've seen what God has done with our families, with our church, with, with the, the history of, of our faith. So I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name for it is good. I just want to speak with you today about worshiping and witnessing in our waiting. Can you pray with me just for a moment? Lord God, we come before you and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for these times that we're living in because we know that you, Lord, are never, Lord, losing control. You're never out of control. You're never, Lord, my God, away on vacation, but you're here with us and you're doing something wonderful. I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds, Lord, the short word that you've given me and that you would allow us, my God, to receive all that you have for us in your precious name we pray. Amen. So the Bible has given us many examples of times when the saints, when the church, when the believers have faced challenges. Challenges are nothing new for us. They will always be there. At times, believers were persecuted. Other times, they were enslaved. Other times, they were forced to assimilate in a, a foreign land. Challenges and changes are a part of life. As we are learning, things can change very quickly. Just a, a couple weeks ago, many of you were, were looking at your vacations. You were looking at your stocks, your retirement. You were looking at your plans at school. Some of you were getting ready to graduate. And in Jesus' name, you still will. But things have changed very quickly, and now there are question marks all over the world. In our daily lives, things have changed. But we know that change and that crisis and the chaos are never outside of the realm of God's influence. We know that our God is still at work. And I, I started thinking of Joseph in the Word of God. And what we know about Joseph is a lot. But we know that he was a young man. He ran from sin as every wise man does. And if you could just look with me in Genesis 39.9 quickly. But it says, no, he, he tells a woman this answer when she's pursuing him. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. Then how could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? The response to Joseph in the moment of challenge is so awesome. He's saying, I could do certain things. I could have a certain way of living. I could do things that, that no one would find out about, but I know that God knows. I know that he sees me, and I want to give him the very best that I am. So what he does here is he openly expresses his reverence to God. Can you say that again? He openly expresses his reverence to God. And in fact, what this is, is this is the definition of worship. When we openly express our reverence, our love, our, our, our appreciation for God. Joseph was a worshiper of the Lord. The Bible says that he wound up getting framed for a crime that he didn't commit. He was taken into a dungeon. And the Bible says that in the dungeon, Joseph didn't change much. Isn't that amazing? I think that's probably one of the, hot, the, the best compliments we can have as a believer, that our worship lifestyle, our witness lifestyle doesn't change anywhere that we are. Whether we are outside and we're elevated in our work or we get a degree at school or we have a lot of great things in the good times or when we fall on bad times, when we go through challenges, when we go through crises, our worship lifestyle should not fall. It should not, it should not falter, but our worship lifestyle should be consistent. In fact, in the moments of crisis, that's when we should elevate it, amen? That's when we should take it to another level. The Bible says that the Lord was with him, and it's interesting because I don't think that there are very many other examples of, of believers in the Word of God that have, have suffered besides, besides Jesus and besides you know, our Lord and Savior. There's no one in the Word of God that probably suffered as much as Joseph did for doing right things. Every time he did something right, it seems like when he was a young man, he, he suffered. But the Bible says that he was taken underground, away from sunlight and into obscurity, and his response was amazing. The Bible says that when we 
fast forward a little bit, as he continued to trust in the Lord, he didn't allow his situation to affect his witnessing. The Bible says that he found favor again with the captain of the guard, and the captain of the guard allowed him to oversee two other prisoners. One was a a cupbearer, and the other one was a baker of Pharaoh. The Bible says that Pharaoh became angry with his two servants, and he sent them to the dungeon. Well, we know that Joseph began to minister to them when they had dreams that troubled them. And I won't go through it all, but we know a little bit about it. We know that that Joseph ministered to the cupbearer and told him, you know what, in this amount of time, you're going to be elevated. And he tells him, when you get elevated and you get out of this dungeon, don't forget me. And the, the baker, he heard the good news that the cupbearer received, and he went to Joseph. He had him interpret his dream. And the Bible says that Joseph told him the bad news, that he was not going to see freedom again. He was going to be killed, and he was going to be impaled. The Bible says that, that those things came to pass. Joseph was witnessing, and he never stopped. But the Bible says that, that the cupbearer went. Uh, he, he, was, he, he was rescued from the dungeon. He was elevated back to his place of service. But the Bible says that for some reason, Joseph was forgotten about by the cup prayer. And I imagine that Joseph had probably his doubts in these times, in these moments. He had just ministered. He had still given God the glory. And he waited and waited and waited. And the Bible says, in fact, he waited two years. And I, I, I can only imagine that Joseph had a couple questions. And he thought, God, why am I going through this? God, haven't I been serving you the right way? God, haven't I been doing things the right way? Haven't I been witnessing? Are you angry at me? Am I ever going to see my freedom again? Why are you taking so long? And these are questions that I'm sure a lot of believers are asking right now. God, when can I go back to work again? God, when can I go back to school again? God, when can I go back to my way of life again? God, when can I do the little things that I miss? But the truth was that God had a purpose for Joseph greater than he could have imagined. It wasn't even about just Joseph. It wasn't even just about Joseph's situation. It was about a situation that God had planned for. God was working on the world. God was getting the land ready for a time when the world was going to need a witness more than ever. And what we have to understand that is that God's timing is perfect. In fact, God, we don't serve a God that does things it, that does things um, of just because. We don't serve a God that, that works in a spontaneous way. Our God has planned everything according to his will. God is never in need of a GPS system. God is our GPS system. God is the one that is guiding and shaping and molding the world around us. And when everyone else has a plan that fails, God is the one that brings everything together. When man rebels against God, God is at work. When our plans fall through, God is at work. God is still at work. Well, the Bible says that the time came for Joseph to minister in an elevated way. The Bible says that the Pharaoh had a dream, actually two dreams that troubled him. And and the Bible says that that the cupbearer remembered Joseph when he was told by Pharaoh about his situation. And and the Bible says that, that Joseph... Even though, like, even though a lot of us might have lost hope, Joseph was ready to minister. So they, they go call Joseph, and they, they pull him out of the dungeon. They shave him, they bathe him, they dress him, and he goes before Pharaoh. And if you would like to turn your Bibles to Genesis 41 with me, you can do that now. It says in Genesis 41, 15, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it. But I have heard it and said, said of you that when, I, when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Look what Joseph says here in verse 16. Joseph says, I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. So right now, isn't that beautiful for you and I? We can't do anything. We don't have control over anything. We don't have the ability to change our situation But we know someone that can. We know someone who's done it before. And we know someone who we can rely on in these times of crisis. The Bible says that that Joseph begins to tell Pharaoh of what his dream means. 
He tells them about the years of fam- uh, the, the years of abundance and the years of famine. And the Bible says that Joseph tells Pharaoh, and now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. The Bible says that Pharaoh looks around and says, hey, wait a minute. There is someone I see in front of me who is filled with the power of God. And what's interesting, Pharaoh's actual words are, can we find anyone like this, one in whom is the spirit of God? What's powerful about that is that Pharaoh was, was, a, a, was a, a king that believed in many gods. But there before him, he saw something different in this young man. He saw something that was alive, something that was powerful, something that had wisdom beyond any of his false gods. So when you and I respond in the proper way in the middle of a crisis, people can see something different in you and I. People are going to are gonna wonder why you and I are so confident, why you and I are so full of joy. And the reason isn't because we have all the answers, because we don't, but we know who we're serving. We know who we're trusting. We know who we're believing on. We know what he's done before, and we we know that he's going to do it again. God is going to do it again. And as I, be, as I realized, as I studied through this night, I let God work in my heart, is that God had always had this plan for Joseph. There are things that God has planned for you and I. There are things that God has planned for our world. But it's not, it wasn't ever going to go according to our plan. It was never going to go according to, to our church's plan. It was always going to go according to God's plan. And God's plan allowed Joseph to be elevated at the perfect time. He was second in command of Egypt and likely was, was one of the most powerful men in the world for his time. And the Bible says that as scripture, scripture tells us that his brothers wind up coming to Egypt to seek grain from him. Joseph puts them through some trials and testing, but ultimately he revealed his true identity was to his brothers. And what Joseph did was this. He not only saved his country, but he also preserved the lineage of his family, of Israel. So God used him to not only bless his country, but also his family and bless the saints for all eternity through his testimony and through his worship. The Bible says that after Israel, his father died, Joseph's brothers were a little nervous because they thought that Joseph might get back at them. And what Joseph tells them in Genesis 15, 19, and 20 speaks wonderfully to us. We're going to read that. In Genesis 50, 19, and 20, it says, But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of of many lives. How wonderful, how powerful is our God. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes of our government. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes of of people's issues that they're having, but we know one thing, that our God intends what's going on for good. What people are, are, are losing hope in right now, what people are going crazy for right now, we know that our God is in control and he's molding things. He's shaping things. He's shaking people's hearts up. He's shaking people's confidence up. God intends this thing for good. This crisis, this coronavirus, we know that God intends it for good. So what does this mean for us? What should our response be? For the believer, these times are giving us a chance more to ever to give to God. Give God what? Give God more time in prayer. Give God more time in getting the word. Give to God in the way that we serve each other at home. Young people, whatever you're doing at home, do more of it. Help your parents out. Clean the house. Take the trash out. Whatever you got to do, serve at home. Be faithful in that way. What else should we do? We should get into our prayer closet more, and we should start our days and end our days in prayer before God. This moment, these times are a way for us to recalibrate our lives before God. It could have been that you were stressed out about your life. It could have been that you were stressed out about your situation, but now's the time for you to be alone with God. Whatever it is that you're doing, stop worrying. Stop listening to what's going on on social media for just a little while and get closer to God. Get into the word, as I said, and allow God to use you for a greater purpose the way he used Joseph. Now is also the time for us to begin witnessing in new ways. As you go online, be the voice of 
positivity and power and purpose in life online. When everyone else is complaining about toilet paper and water and not having bread, tell them that you have the bread of life. Tell them that you have the answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Reach out to them and just pray with them. Sometimes people just might need you to pray with them or listen to their problems. Be a friend in this time of need. And for the believer, what does this mean? For the, for the unbeliever, I'm sorry, what does this mean? For the unbeliever, God is at work. God is using this period to prepare the hearts of people around us. They've been trusting in their jobs. They've been trusting in their 401k. They've been trusting in their vacations. They've been trusting in sports. I know a lot of you young men are listening to me. Soccer's gone. Basketball's gone. Baseball was supposed to open up very soon. And what do you do now? Amen. What are they doing now? I know some of my own coworkers are, are more open, open now about talking about the word of God. Why? Because people are looking for a deeper truth. People are looking for a deeper purpose. And now's the time that they are being stripped away of their trust in the things of this world. Now people are seeing that everything in this life is flawed. We, now we know we can't rely on certain things. Now we know that there, there are, there are going to be times where the stores are closed, where, 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 where the gym is no longer open for business, where the stadiums are no longer open for us to go watch and be entertained. Now is a time for entertainment to be shuttered. Now is a time for people's hope to be shattered in the things of this world. And now is a time for them to open up their heart and for you to go and be a witness. So what we need to do, church, is allow these circumstances to push us forward and elevate our worship and elevate our witnessing. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's respond to this time and let's continue to worship and continue to witness. Lift up your hands there where you are and let's call on the name of God. Lord Jesus, we come before you because you are a good God. As Joseph learned, Lord, you intend these things for good and we know that this is good. This is good for us. This is good for this world for us to go through this time of need and this time of insecurity. Lord, right now we bring before you, Lord, the saints of the church, that you would cover the church. Not only would you allow the church thr to thrive, my God, but you, would you allow the church to multiply right now. May we have baptisms, Lord, like never before. May we have people hungry for Bible studies. May we have people hungry, Lord, Lord, for salgris. May we have people hungry, my God, for receiving more of your word. And we ask you, my God, to give us boldness to preach the word, to post the word, to speak the word, to share the word online, in, Lord, in person. If it's someone that lives with us, if it's someone, Lord, through text or phone, may we witness and may we worship like never before. We thank you for these things. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing. And we ask you, Lord, also to be with our government leaders, to be with our president, to be with, Lord, those around the world that are looking, my God, for a way, my Father, Lord, to find an answer, to find, Lord, Lord some security. May they find a security in you. We also pray, Lord God, for those that are, Lord, serving, Lord, in the, in the offices, Lord, the medical offices and in, in the hospitals. My God, we ask you to cover, Lord, all the doctors and the nurses, Lord. May you call, cover, Lord, our own doctor, Brother Leo Maffei, Lord. Cover him and protect him everywhere that he goes. Use him to minister. Use him, my God, to open up the hearts, my God, of those that he comes in contact with. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, uh, we're thankful to God for his beautiful word. God bless Minister Stephen, our youth pastor, and God bless Bishop Maffei, our senior pastor. And um, we know Brother, Brother Minister Stephen was talking about the power of God's word. The reason why God's word is so powerful, Jesus said his word is spirit and life. And in these times of crisis, it is so important that we uh, continue um, amen. Ministering that we can continue to declare the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. People are looking for a way out. But only Jesus is the answer. Only Jesus can give us life. And so we want to encourage every single person that is w watching this uh, ministry today. We want to encourage you to give. Amen. Continue to give. The Bible says that we are to be cheerful givers. And the Bible talks about uh, uh, the uh, certain churches uh, that were able to give even beyond their ability. So uh, we do have an app uh, and Venmo. Uh, you can give uh, to our to the ministry. Uh, young people, um, we, we, you know about that. Uh, it's Venmo Sion Santa Ana. 
And uh, please, um, we want to just encourage you. We know that these times are very difficult. We know that we are all under uh, financial constraints, but we serve a God that is faithful. And, and we serve a God whose promises are true. And so when we um, take that step of faith, we can know that God is going to be able to provide, and God is the one that's, that, that is in control. Hermanos, paz de Cristo una vez más. Gracias a Dios por su palabra. Gracias a Dios por el hermano ministro Esteban Maffei. Gracias al Señor por el pastor. Pero esta palabra es palabra de Dios. Cristo dijo, su palabra es vida y es espíritu. Entonces, hoy es el tiempo más que nunca, hermanos, que necesitamos dar, dar a la obra de Dios y, y dar uh, con todo nuestro corazón. Sabemos que estos tiempos son uh, tiempos difíciles financieramente, pero nosotros servimos a un Dios que Él es fiel. Él es fiel a su palabra y Él es nuestro Dios que está en control. Entonces, hermanos, si todavía no han podido dar por la aplicación Venmo, por favor, llama a nosotros. Pueden llamar a la hermana Laura Vázquez, su líder, um, y, o directamente al pastor. Si un ministro uh, tiene que ir allá a su hogar y recoger la ofrenda, esto es algo que puede ser de grande bendición. Y nosotros, hermanos, una vez más, estamos uh, celebrando porque el Señor él está en control, no nosotros. Y vamos, hermanos, a seguir confiando en Él. Y con la ley de Dios vamos a seguir, seguir dando estas um, palabras de Dios en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Hermanos, que Cristo les bendiga grandemente. Amén.